Welcome back to Mr. Hassan's math channel. This is question number six from the Pure Mathematics P2 International A Level at Excel, October 2021 exam. Um, question number six, part one says the circle C1 has equation x squared plus y squared plus 10x minus 12y equals k, where k is a constant. Find the coordinates of the center of C1. So we need to do what we need to do here is we need to complete the square. So we have x squared plus 10x plus y squared minus 12y equals k. So completing the square, you end up with x plus 5 all squared, and then take away 25, and you have plus y minus 6 all squared, take away 36, equals k. So when you complete the square, you take half of the coefficient, so the x squared and x term, take half a quotient of the x and write that inside the square bracket. That will give you x squared plus 10x plus 25. We don't want the 25, so we must take away 25. And similarly for here, when you um, have the y squared and the, and the y term, you take half of the coefficient of the y, which is minus 6. If you expand y minus 6 squared, it will give you y squared minus 12y. It will give you plus 36. We don't want the plus 36. We take away 36. So now we end up with x plus 5 squared, plus y minus 6 squared, and then that gives you negative 61 equals k. So we can then write it in this form, plus y minus 6 squared is equal to k plus 61. All right, now we can from here determine the center of the circle is going to be this is part A now. So I'm, I'm, basically what I've done here is I've got, I've got things ready. By doing this, we've got things ready to answer both of those questions A and B. The center is going to be the opposite of what's in the x bracket, which is negative 5 for the x coordinate, and the opposite of what's in the y bracket, which is plus 6. That's the center of the circle. Okay, It's always the opposite sign of whatever's inside the bracket. Basically, the x value that makes this bracket 0 it's the x coordinate of the center and the y value that makes the other bracket zero is the y coordinate of the um, of the uh, center of the circle. Okay, that's part A done. Okay, so we've done all the work for part A by doing this and also for part B. Part B says state the possible range in values for k. Now we we see that this represents the um, the square of the radius. Okay, this represents the square of the radius. So um, you know. This is basically r squared is equal to k plus 1. Now, we know that the radius must be greater than 0. You can't have a radius that is 0 or a radius that is negative. It doesn't make sense. The radius has to be in a value that is um, positive. Okay? Um, just, just, you know, like just with common sense, if k plus 661 is a negative value and r squared was negative, it would be undefined, R would be undefined. If you try to find the square root of a negative number, then you know R would be undefined. So k plus 61, k plus 61 must be greater than zero. Otherwise, R will be undefined. And in, in just by common sense, you can't have a, a circle with a radius of zero or negative radius. So therefore, k must be greater than negative 61 for that, for that to be true. If k, k is greater than negative 61, okay, then you will have um, always a positive gradient, right? Always have a positive gradient. Sorry, positive, uh, positive radius. Okay, so obviously it makes sense. This 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 term will always be this r squared will always be positive. I mean, if r squared is always positive, then you know it makes sense. If r squared is zero or negative, then there will be no solution to that. R can't be zero because the radius can't be zero for a circle. And it can't ask where it can't be negative, otherwise it will be undefined. So there's the answer for six part one A and B. Now for part two. It says the point P zero, the point Q minus two ten, and the point R eight negative fourteen lie on a different circle C two. Given that P is a positive constant and Q R is a diameter of the circle C two, find the exact value of P. So a good idea is always to make a little sketch and taking a little 
a protractor or compass in with you to the exam for this topic is always a good idea so you could draw a nice circle sometimes it helps you to imagine what's going on here so we've got r8 minus 14 so it's going to be down to the left a bit um to the right sorry and this is minus 210 so it's going to be like this all right so you're going to have a diameter of a circle that looks something like this you don't have to draw it actually i'm just trying to just picture what's going on so r would be say somewhere over here 8 negative 14 and Q would be somewhere up here, negative 2 and 10. The, the diameter, they form the diameter of the circle. And P is a positive constant, which has coordinates P0. So maybe somewhere over here. P0. Um, P0. So the point P has coordinates P0. P is a positive constant, so P is going to be somewhere on this side. So I'm just kind of picturing what's happening. Now, we want to find the exact value of, of P. So P is the point where Y equals 0, okay, we want to find what P is. And that, so um, P is a point on the circle, on the circumference of the circle. So this point P will satisfy the equation of the circle. So if we can find the equation of the circle and substitute Y equals 0 into the equation of the circle, that will give us the X coordinate of the point P, which is the value of P. So our objective here now is to find the equation of the circle, which, because we know the diameter of the circle, we can find the two things that we need. To find the equation of the circle, we need two things. We need to have the center of the circle, which we can find, because we have the diameter. So the center is m the midpoint of the diameter. And the second thing we need to find the equation of the circle is its radius. Okay, because we know the equation of the circle is x minus a squared plus y minus b squared equals r squared. So if we know what a, b is, which is the center, if we know what a, b is, which is the center, and we know what r is, which is the radius, we can find the equation of the circle. Once we've got the equation of the circle, we can substitute y into there to find the x value, which will be the p value of the point p. Okay, so that's what we're um, working on here. Okay, now to find the center of the circle, uh, we take the midpoint of the diameter. So we need the midpoint of the diameter. So we have Q as minus 210 and we have R as 8 minus 14. So the, the center of the circle will be given by minus 2 plus 8, the average of the X coordinates divided by 2 and the average of the Y coordinates, which is 10, plus minus 14, which is 10 minus 14 over 2. Okay, so the center of the circle will be given by, that's 6 over 2, which is 3, and minus uh, 4 over 2, which is negative 2. So that's the center of the circle. So we've got the center as 3 minus 2, and the radius of the circle we can find in a number of ways. We now know that the center of the circle is 3 minus 2. So we can use, either we can find the diameter, the length of the diameter using the length formula, and divide by 2 or we could use this center with any of these two points let's use the center and q so let, let's say what qc qc is equal to r which is equal to so the magnitude of qc is equal to r which is equal to the change in the x coordinates which is going to be minus 5 squared plus the change in the y coordinates which is going to be 10 minus minus 2 which is 12 squared so that's going to give you actually 13 that's the square root of, that's 5, 12, 13 triangle, isn't it? That's going to give you the square root of 169, which is 13. So you can say the radius is equal to 13. So now we know the radius is equal to 13. So we can now write down the equation of the circle, which is x minus 3 squared. This is a 2 here, minus 2. And you're going to have plus y minus minus 2 which is y plus 2 squared equals 13 squared which is 169 that is the equation of the circle so we have the point p the point p which is p0 so when when basically when y equals 0 you're going to substitute that into here so you have x minus 3 squared plus and you're going to have 2 squared equals 169 so x minus 3 squared equals 165, 169 minus 4. And so x minus 3 is equal to plus or minus the square root of 165, 
So x is going to be 3 plus or minus the square root of 165. Now, it says p is a positive. p is positive. Okay, it says that in the question. p is a positive constant. Okay, p is a positive constant. So therefore, um, 3 minus root 165 will obviously be negative. So therefore, we can say that p is equal to 3 plus the square root of 165. And there's the answer. Is that what they asked us to find p? Find the exact value of p. Exact value of p, unrounded, written in third form, 3 plus the square root of 165. And I don't think 165 will actually break down into any thing in third form no it stays like that so that's the exact simplified third form of the answer and there's the answer to question six part two completed um thank you for watching other questions from this paper of october 2021 p2 can be found in this playlist that should appear somewhere in this area at the end of the video you will also find questions to do with circles and um, coordinate geometry of uh, p2 in this section over here you can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link Thank you for watching and see you soon.